So, about a week ago, we got some big card fight Vanguard news, and I didn't cover it. Why? Well, the truth is that I've been pretty busy lately, so kind of I want to prioritize getting the Shadowverse video out, since that covered the end of one arc before a new one starts. And also, truth be told, I haven't really wanted to talk about Cardfight Vanguard because, well, with how negative I was in the last season, I didn't want to spread more negativity. But, well, the more time sat, the more I kind of thought about it, and I kind of feel like we can uh, get through this in a way that's not, like, harsh or anything. So, yeah, we're just going to do that. First, we're going to talk about the TCG news, and then we'll move on to the anime news. So, let us begin with the ban list update. All they did was hit one card. They hit the fucking Bermuda Triangle loop card. Why? Because that's kind of all you really need to do. Okay, there's other stuff that could get the hit, but this was really the big thing in people's eyes. Why did you not hit this earlier in the season, during the season, at any point where it would have made a difference? Now, it wound up being a pretty healthy season for premium in the grand scheme of things, so this could have been a lot worse, especially based on early predictions going into the season. Uh, but it just feels weird to do it, like, right now. Like, we're not close enough for this to be a big deal for Spring Fest, and everything is basically over. I don't even think this doesn't even go into effect till after Worlds. So, why do this now? It just feels random and out of place, but... Better late than never, I guess. I mean, I'm not really one to talk right now. Um, moving on, we have my favorite news reveal, and that is that main decks will go from being 46 to 50 cards. What do I mean by that, you might be asking? Well, naturally, since your ride deck is four cards you keep separate and in different sleeves anyways, it means you effectively play with a 46-card deck. The problem with that is, in a game like Vanguard, that's got a very high emphasis on RNG, doing things to make your RNG more in your favor is a bad thing for card design. And the issue is it was only getting worse with how decks like Youth Burke can turbo through their decks now basically really quickly. We now have Mushi King here, and if you've seen that go off, that deck can be fucking insane. And just in general, it seems like card design is going more in the Yu-Gi-Oh route of searching and getting to your combo pieces quicker, and all of that stuff increases trigger chances. So I think one of the first things you can do to stop this, because I think we're a little too late going into this direction to kind of stop, is to make main decks bigger. Just making it that there's less of a chance for hitting triggers or even drawing or checking into combo pieces is kind of a big deal. Especially when you have older decks like, say, Youth Burke, or at least at the time when this rule goes into effect, or even stuff like Bastion. The fact that the decks have to be less consistent and play less optimal cards, and some options maybe even have to go for more bricky cards, I think it actually does put a lot of those older decks in check, as well as Future Proof's new decks to be able to do more of whatever Bushi wants them to do without them becoming as degenerate as they could have. I'm a little hesitant, though, to say how much this will do, because we'll have to see how it's implemented. But anything to, like, kind of circumvent some of these problems D is starting to have, I think is a step in the right direction, even if we'll kind of have to see if more will have to be done going further. Next, we have something I think that's really cool, and that is that starting with this year's, with 2024 Spring Fest, uh, there will be a new tournament structure where... It'll be all three formats on one team. One guy plays D, one V, one P. That is such a fun idea. I love the idea of implementing the different formats like this and having everyone have to be like specialized, especially because I think a lot of areas have like one guy who likes P, one guy who likes V, and I think making it that you can sort of like work with those numbers better, I think is a lot of fun. Also, it gives like new players chances to do more with Spring Fest if they really only have a D deck at the time. So... That's such a fun idea to me. I'm really excited for that. I'm really happy they're doing that. Can you all tell? I really don't want to get into the anime news. Oh, we can talk about this. Um, the new energy counter mechanic, not crazy about. I feel like Cardfight Vanguard can sometimes get into Yu-Gi-Oh levels of just too much crap you have to remember. And I feel like making a buddy fight gauge style system just kind of feels annoying and... 
just needlessly complicated one again. I feel like to a certain extent you do have to fix card design and they don't seem to want to do that. Uh, also, the trial decks being all vanillas and now ride lines that we know probably won't even be relevant is kind of bullshit. So, yeah, that sucks. Um, yeah, let's just get right into the anime news. So we got our Divine Z news. Uh, effectively, oh, one last thing. Making it we don't get the trial decks till April and the sets to and the next set till May is bullshit. <laughs> I don't want to wait that long. You're doing nothing in like March. Give us the trial decks in March, the set in April. What is this fucking release calendar? Half the BCSs will probably be over by then or Spring Fest, whatever. Oh, also, I like that starting with this. Uh, Lyrical will be in main sets. I don't like the idea that Lyrical and before that Bermuda was this weird offshoot thing of the game. It only made it feel more uncomfortable and awkward for a lot of people. And it also keeps the Lyrical power creep more in check because it's just going at the same rate as everything else. Not either hyper accelerated because they have to get more shit out or far behind because it's just there's just only one supportive set every like four months. So that's really cool. So. Moving on to the Divine Z news. All right, let's start off with the premise of this show. I don't have it in front of me. We're doing the shit off memory. So the idea to Divine Z is that six card fighters get chosen by fate, I guess, to have some sort of like tournament with each other and the winner will get their wish granted. Many people are saying this sounds a lot like Madoka Magica. I am saying this sounds like a million other things and that in turn lies the problem. The simple fact of the matter is when you have a premise that sounds like it could be shoehorned into a million other shows, when you're coming off a season that went over pretty negatively is not a good sign. Like, this sounds like just kind of every other kidding anime, and many of you could be saying, but wait, what was Overdress's synopsis? I don't care, I'm not looking it up. But the difference was, was that going into Overdress, we had a new studio, we had new characters, all these different things to make us feel like, even if it sounded simple, it was going to be fresh and interesting, and it was for a while. Here... We're still in the same universe. We're still dealing with a lot of the same Bushi Road bullcrap that was kind of like influencing the old show. And like the show constantly reminds you of the series you were sick of. There's the obvious, which is the main character just looks like an older UU. Honestly, it wouldn't shock me if this was an older UU design that got repurposed when the decision was made you had to make new characters. But we have returning characters in this main roster of six. Fucking Walesta guy and Masanori are back. Why? That is a bad idea. Why do they keep trying to shove the Walesta guy down our throats? I don't get it. And Masanori already has gone through a lot of his arc, and now he just gets to be like part of this team of what the fuckery? Like, why? It's not a great idea. As far as the new characters go, I mean, the Dragon Empire girl is super fucking hot. Like, that character looks cool. The lyrical girl is cute. Again, like I said, I like the idea that's here. The Dark States guy looks exactly like you fucking expect him to look like for the bad guy. And then, like, the main character's shtick is he just wants to, like, get his wish to save his sister. And, again, I'm li I like that this guy off the bat does have more agency than, like, you, you did, but... You know, again, we just kind of see this a lot and just kind of relying on this more tropey plot line, I don't think really fixes a lot of your problems. And then you have like um, Megamine's back as like a mentor role. Why not just make her the instead of Masanori? Why not? Why? You fucked this character over so hard. Why not just do this? I feel like that would at least win some good faith over to be like, we hear you, we know we screwed your waifu over, so we're gonna try and, like, do better by her for this new show. Um, oh yeah, and then you just have it, like, there's a weird stuffed animal voiced by Lelouch, which, again, gets the Madoka comparisons, but I argue you see that in a lot of these kinds of shows. Rather, that's because of Madoka Magica, not as a different story, but it just kind of feels like they're not focusing on what could make the story feel unique. They're just once again focusing on how to make it as generic as possible. So in conclusion, I don't know why I said in conclusion. Um, just to finish things off, 
if you're excited, if this sounds like a lot of fun to you, if you're invested, good, you should be. Like, you shouldn't be cynical and jaded like me. But I've just been burnt by this franchise so many times. And my concern's always going to go back to that. This is going to be a repeat of with Cardfight Vanguard G. You had much more simplistic characters than the first Vanguard. And they just didn't have a lot to them. And the reason for that was so Bushi could just bully the writers around and have them just do whatever they wanted. As opposed to a writing staff were going to stand up for their vision because they were given the time to make characters interesting. The fact that this has fucked over every era of Cardfight Vanguard at some point, I think just doesn't give me a lot of hope for this. And again, I don't want to be negative, but I mean, just like, what is there here to latch on to? I mean, I'm happy the main character uses Keter, so I'm going to get a lot more fun toys. But I do sort of hate it's once again another weird dragon mech thing like we get a lot in this franchise. But yeah, I just don't really have any super reason to get excited, but we'll see when it comes out. I probably won't do like week to week unless it's really interesting, uh, but we'll talk about it at some point. But what do you think? In the comment section below, give me your thoughts about the game changes. Those are really fun. The anime news, which isn't really anything. Uh, tell me that in the comment section below. And as always, click to like, click to subscribe, and join me to see if uh, Divine Z can be any good.